Yo, what's up, boys? It's your boy Spankers back again with another AOE Mage Guide. This time I'm going to be showing you a couple of fixes and changes that uh, we've optimized into doing the WC200 plus pool instead of the 170 or 240. This is probably the most efficient pool. You can sell it for AG a run. This is what my inventory looks like. We got Swiftness pots. These are important. Magic Resistance pots. These are also important for the kill phase. Elixir of Firepower, he Healing Potions, Silk Bandages, Lesser Mana pots. Rumsey Black Label Ale, Heavy Dynamites, Defense Elixirs. You don't need Elixir of Lesser Agility. I bring them anyways. Just kind of more of a flex, I guess. I don't know. Strong Trolls Blood Pots, Elixir Mind of Fortitude. I also got the Boon up here. You'll definitely need that. You don't need free actions, but I recommend bringing some mana and food. I bring Goblin Deviled Clams instead of Crocolisks. Steak, whatever, soup now, because these are just more gold efficient. We're here for money. Um... And if I didn't mention them, Elixir of Minor Fortitude, and then some Mana Pots if I didn't mention those as well. I also bring Deviates. These don't affect your run, but they make you look nice. Next thing we'll go over is gear. So this is pretty much best in slot mage AOE gear right here. <clears throat> um, there's not really anything that you could get that would be better besides the honor stuff. So if you can get the honor cape, the honor ring, the honor trinket, that, that would probably be your best bet aside from this. Also, the staff, you could probably do well with that as well. But this is probably a little bit better because you can get rid of Clam Weave and actually use Twilight Invokers. Now, if you want the Dollar General version of this, you can probably just use some Ant Stam gear here. You need these Epic Boots, but you can just go in the raid and get those at any time. You could use Spellfire Damage Pants or like 7 Stam, 8 Int, whatever, 7 Stam, 7 Int. <clears throat> here, you would be using a Spell Damage Belt or a Int int stam belt here you would be using the phoenix gloves here you would be using the same exact goggles or the four four ones from engineering you need 150 or 100 for that here you could just use a one stam six spirit neck or preferably the honor neck piece here you could do magician's mantle is just best slot i would just recommend grabbing this off the auction house the kibi cape that's like 23 silver this is also good i use this on most of my characters Twilight Invokers robes. The alternative to this is going to be the SFK robes from Robes of Argyll. Then you got Phoenix Bindings. I would recommend just grabbing this. And if you don't have any of these, I would recommend just getting a Crescent Staff and then the, the wand from the raid. If you don't have the wand from the raid, you can just use like a 1.5 or 1.4 wand, whatever. Yeah, so that's gear. The runes we're going to be using is Regeneration, Living Flame, and Living Bomb, as always. And then <clears throat> I have a couple different macros and add-ons that I'll post down below if you guys need those. A couple different weak ores I'll also post down below. And then the last thing we'll talk about is talent. So talents, we got 2 out of 2 arcane subtlety, 3 out of 5 arcane focus, 5 out of 5 magic absorption, 1 out of 5 arcane concentration, 2 out of 2 magic attunement, and 1 out of 1 arcane resilience. And then we got 2 out of 2 in frost warding. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to buff up here. So what I typically do is I'll sit down and get my well-fed boost and then drink all these pots here while I'm drinking that to get my well-fed. Also, what I'd recommend as well is if you get a if you get a fortitude buff from a priest standing out here, that would probably be your best bet is to get a fortitude buff. Fortitude buffs are really, really juiced. They help you out a lot. <clears throat> and then also up here, as you can see, I got this weak aura that keeps track of all my consumables. Thanks to Kevon B, so shout out to him. We'll use our last couple ones, and then we're going to want to use Dampen Magic. So we'll go ahead and get ready and get into this pool. <coughs> Sorry, I've been having throat issues a little bit lately. All right, so we're going to unboon here. And then we're just going to go straight into the pool. Pick up this boosty right now. All right, so we got our stopwatch ready. We got our kill tracker ready. Everything's ready. We'll just go ahead and get straight into it. All right, so we're going to start our stopwatch here. You can click back there to get that buff if you want. I'm going to go straight into the pool right here and just start going. So the way that I make this fast is I just want one of these right here. Fire blast here. You want to make sure that's rank one. Living bomb there. Jump here. And then I just living bomb this guy while I'm running. Use a frost nova here. Kind of walk this way a little bit and then into the mobs. That way they don't aggro too fast. Living bomb the one in the back. 
run past these and blink. Fire blast. Then we're going to regenerate right there. Now this part is where I change it up a little bit in this boost. We're going to use a living flame on this last Raptor right here so we can make it all the way through. Then we'll just kind of zoom out a little bit. You can see mobs a little bit easier there. We'll fire blast here. I like the frost nova here or at least get, I don't know, three to four frost novas on that. And then we'll counter spell here, grab these two mobs and blink across. Then you're down here easy. If you want, if your runs take a little bit longer than mine, you can use Evo here. Or if you're just low on mana, you can use Evo here and heal up however you want. If you see the mob standing like this, what I like to do is this. I'll grab all these mobs, drag them together, and then frost over these here so they stack up with the other mobs right there. And then instead of looping these, I'm going to show you how to group them a little bit better later on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wait right here for a second. And then we're just going to blink. It doesn't really matter how far back those mobs get because they're not really going to reset. So then we're going to run up this edge right here. I'm going to jump and frost over here after pulling that other mob. That's what you can do if the ectoplasm's there. Then what I'm going to do is fire blast here. Living bomb and then blink straight across. Now, instead of hugging the left wall, if you're more comfortable, you can hug this right wall. And I'm going to teach you guys how to not have any of the pythons die. So around this first pack, I'm going to go ahead and use a mana shield. If you don't have a lot of mana, you don't have to do this, but just make sure you have sufficient enough health. Then what I'm going to do is before this pack aggros, I'm just going to blink wand right here so I can keep regenerating mana while I'm running. And then we're just going to walk around this because everything else socially aggros. So you don't have to worry about pulling anything or using any abilities. Now, here's where the swiftness spot's going to come in handy. As you can see, we got a lot of mobs back there. So I'm going to reapply my shield, cross over these, wait like a second, jump up over this with, the, with a swiftness spot, and then duck back into these mobs without getting dazed. Before we hit the ground, we're going to blink. That way, Cobron doesn't reset. I'm going to run up this hill right here. You need to make sure you get here fast enough. If you don't, Cobra won't fully aggro and you have to go back and get him. And it's really difficult to do that unless you're super comfortable. So we missed a mob right here, but it's okay. My macros are target exact. So Lady Anaconda's way down there and Lord Cobra's right here. You need to make sure that Lord Cobra gets past this hallway before you do any sort of movement off of this hill. Because the issue that's going to come into play is that he's going to reset all the way back. So what I like to do, if these two mobs are too close, I'll just frost over here, wait on the rest of these other mobs, and then I'll just blink across right here. Now, don't get dazed here. If there's too many mobs on you, just use a shield. The blink was a little bit late there for me, but if you, if you have issues grouping, you can just go up here one time. I'm not going to do it because if you want to move those mobs back and forth, you can. But as you can see, we already got... Lord Pythus there and he's ready to go. So another recommendation, don't jump along this wall ever. It'll reset all the mobs uh, later on in the pool. So you'll have mobs that just reset all the time if you do that. Just make sure you run around the base of that wall. We get right here. I'm going to reapply Dampen Magic because we got full, eight, full, full mana. And then you want about 500 to 600 mana or 600 health going into this next part. If you have more, that's fine. Now, I'm going to reset this because up here we just got some bile toads and some snakes. So it's no biggie. I'm going to frost over right here, living bomb the one down below, and then I'm going to blink up. Now, what this blink does, it gives you enough time to drop off and let all those mobs in the back group up in the back. And yeah, I'm making a video. What's up, Steve-O? Uh, we'll go ahead right here and wand this mob. Every single thing is grouped up. Right here, if you want, you can actually aggro that mob and then blink. And this will save you about 40 seconds. So we're going to wand this mob. Living bomb this mob right here. Make sure you keep your back turned to the... Or yeah, your back turned away from the mobs. We're going to grab these mobs right here. Stand here. If you get dazed here, it's perfectly okay. All you got to do is just walk it off. Frost over those mobs. And as soon as you get close to this rock, these people are going to be pretty close. So you're just going to blink. Now... In this pool, if you're doing the 240, you would use a magic resistance potion at the top of this pool or the top of this hill. 
but we're not doing that pool, so you don't need to use it. If you want to, you still can, but I would recommend saving your pot cooldown for a little bit later on in the pool. So right here, as you can see, we have one snake that's been killed and that's it. So we're just going to reset this and watch what happens. All the pythons are in all the pythons and crocs are actually in exp range and so anything that dies right here is actually going to be getting exp to your boosties and this is the one way that you can get all of the mobs for your boosties so what we'll do here is we'll hug the left wall and then i'm not going to use another living flame until i get back to this part of the dungeon that way i'm not killing mobs that don't need to be killed when i get right here i'm going to frost nova so i can aggro this pack or you can save it. But once I get right here, I'm going to blink. If you were to save that Frost Nova, you would just run in and aggro all these with Frost Nova. And then blink across, which you can also do. But what I like to do is wand here. And then not apply too many living bombs to the mobs around here. So I only got one on that pack. That way everything doesn't die. Then what I'm going to do is hug this left wall so the casters don't cast on me. Blink across. And now normally where you would living flame in those videos back then... In the, in the previous videos, you're not going to Living Flame here. What you're going to do is you're just going to run, Frost Nova, get these mobs grouped together, <clears throat> and then you're actually going to blink right here to create a little bit of space in between you and all the mobs. Everything else will just friendly aggro, or social aggro, sorry. Here you can turn your back as you don't want that mob to really hit you in the back. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to walk straight across, and I have a macro for scum so when we get close we can just aggro them we'll face aggro these mobs and then blink through right here if you want to make this easier you can use a swiftness pot but i've been doing this for a long while so i'm just gonna go ahead and use my blink and that's it here i'm gonna frost nova grab all these mobs together and then i like to throw a dynamite on this last pack so i'm not wasting too much mana and then i'll just blink up and across and that's exactly how you grab all 200 mobs the only thing that you might miss is probably an ectoplasm and everybody hates those anyways so it's not really that big of a deal then we'll walk on down here and as you can see we only killed one snake with all of that aside from the mobs that we had already killed previously so this is this is a little bit messed up right here but i'll show you how to get around this so what we're going to do is apply a mana shield then we're going to use that living bomb on pythus and remember, you don't need to be scared of any of these mobs. Just mana shield and then blink through. Yeah, nice. So this is probably one of the more scuffed runs that I'd have, even though we're still on time. But watch. So here, you're just going to drop off the edge. Don't aggro this mob if you're low on HP. You don't need to redo your damp and magic because you already did it way earlier. So by the time you see these mobs hit this corner right here, you're going to use a minor magic resistance potion. And then right here, you're just going to keep regening your mana until the mobs get close to you. And you're going to wait right here. Wait right here. And then I'm going to Living Flame one of the mobs in the back. It didn't resist, so we're going to heal up all the way. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take that mob that is hitting all these other mobs. And we're just going to blink. That hill right there is in EXP range of all your boosties. So... They should get all of the, the mobs that you're going to get there in EXP range. Now, I'm going to show you how to keep these mobs grouped up without you dying to them right here. Because your living flame is off. The mobs in the back are way back there. So, what you're going to do is you're going to come to this side and then blink across. What that does is it gives you enough time to frost nova and wait on these mobs. And then you can just jump off. Or you can do it the same way that I was doing in the last video. And you can just stand right there and wait on the rest of the mobs. But doesn't really matter either way you do it it's still going to work pretty effectively so i'll just regen right there as you can see troll's blood is taking everything else is if you have a fortitude buff you're in a pretty good spot right here then what we're going to do is we're going to look around and just target a shambler that's pretty high hp right here and then as they get to that end of that rock i'm going to blink now a lot of people have issues with grouping mobs so what you want is you don't want these bosses to cast on you while you're running this way so you want to make sure that you blink to where you have enough space to get around before those mobs actually start casting on you then i'll just frost nova on the edge of this wall blink through and as you can see i got my target and once i get about right there i'm just going to run across and living bomb or living flame sorry stand in the front a little bit 
And then we're just going to go ahead and use a living bomb on every boss. And as you can see, at about eight seconds left on your living flame, you're going to use a, or sorry, you're going to arcane explosion. And then about four seconds left, you're just going to use a heavy dynamite and then a frost nova to group all these mobs up. And then while you're walking away, you're going to put a, another living bomb on all of the bosses. <clears throat> And as you can see, if you really group these mobs up super, super well, this pool would have been done at about 11 minutes to 11.05, aside from scum, obviously. But what we're going to do here to dodge all of this is we're going to go right here. We're going to heal up a little bit and wait till scum gets pretty close. We're going to cast a living flame on him and then a counter spell so he stacks on the side of this wall. And then we're just going to stack every single boss on the side of this wall right here. Frost Nova to keep them grouped, whatever you gotta do. And then just spam Arcane Explosion. If you need to use another Heavy Dynamite, you can. And then we'll just burst every single mob down and clean up the rest of the pool. What I like to do here is I like to go ahead and loot all these bosses. That way I don't have to worry about it later on. As you can see, we got Leggings of the Fang. That's super good. And then I'll just drop down here and go ahead and kill all these mobs that are left over. And you'll pretty much be finishing this pool about right now every single time. So 12 minutes, 15 seconds. And there may be like a couple extra mobs in this little pocket over here. But other than that, that's exactly how you do it. If you do it perfectly, you can get it down to about 11 minutes. If it's a run like this, it'll be about 12 to 13. So boom. Boom, and then there is the last mob, and we will just go ahead and log out right here. And this is where you log out, Skip. And that's exactly how you do 200 mobs, guys. Thanks. Please drop that like, that follow, the sub, and check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash bankers.